So I think that uh, this is a complicated uh, effort. I think that the objective should be to have the Coast Guard refugees have the right of redress. Well, how do we achieve that? I mean, if you were president, what would you do now? Well, I think that there are, I think right now there is a moment where diplomacy could play a very important role, and I think the diplomatic solution here is, uh, is advisable. Would um, you stop the bombing? Well, I, you might consider that, but I think that uh, the question really is, if you did that, you'd not only do it in order to have a diplomatic initiative, but you'd do it to try to, to take advantage of the humanitarian moment to try to help the Kosovars, uh, who are inside Kosovo now, adrift and without homes and often hungry. And I think that if you did have the bombing pause, you could do that, if that was thought to be given intelligence, which I don't have, an advisable course. Well, would you support, uh, let's just say we could get some of these folks back into Kosovo, would you support American troops in some sort of peacekeeping force there, which could last? Well, well you know, uh, in 1996, when we voted in the Senate to deploy uh, troops to Bosnia, the president said they'd be there about three or four months. Yeah. And uh, I made a speech on the Senate floor, and I said that I thought that what we'd done is just establish the next Berlin. And if our objective was to deploy force so that we would prevent violence between Bosnia and Serbs, violence that's been going on for a thousand years, that we would have to be there indefinitely. And I think that that would be the case also in Kosovo with the protectorate. So I think that one of our objectives, it depends on you know what were our objectives here. Um, one of them was that we not have a permanent U.S. force in the region indefinitely. And uh, I'm afraid, that unless there are some modification of objectives, that that could very well be where we'd end up participating in a force for an indefinite period in the Balkans. I also think that if our objective was to prevent ethnic cleansing, it has already happened. If our objective was to prevent uh, this conflict from sloshing over into other countries in the region, it has already happened uh, with the refugee crisis. So I, I think that the key thing here is how to resolve it uh, with the Kosovars having the right to redress. So, so yeah, I understand that, but I, um, I, I don't understand whether you would support, you know, our participation in that. I understand we don't want to. I would, it. I would support our participation in in facilitating that. Absolutely. Um, no. And I think a big part of that um, is a diplomatic effort. You know what the problem is. I didn't go to Princeton or any place else for that matter. So <laughs> it's very difficult for me to understand what's going on. But I'm, I'm muddling through here. You know, we were talking to Bill Richardson yesterday. You know him? I do know Bill Richardson. He's a great guy, isn't he? I have a lot of respect for yeah, him. Yeah, I like him. He's a former congressman from... Uh, He's the, out there in your, home, your second home state. Yeah, New Mexico. Anyway, uh, but it's painful to listen to the White House, and I'm just including him as part of that. But unwilling to assume any or, or a great deal of responsibility for the Chinese stealing these apparently stealing these nuclear secrets out of Los Alamos, almost had a nuclear secret chat room as Charles said up there, and there's so there's some suspicion that the president's not telling the truth about what he knew and when he knew it. And what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that the best way to deal with these kind of circumstances is to be very candid with the American people. If a mistake was made, uh, I think you have to level with people. Um, I think that if you try to um, cover it up or you try to um, delay recognition of it by people, that in, uh, at the end it's not, a, it's not a positive outcome. I don't know what the facts are surrounding this cir circumstance, but as a general rule, I think uh, more candor is better than less. Have you uh, taken a position in the katzenberg eisner <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm with Eisner on that one. Oh, you are. Although I don't, I, again, I haven't followed the contractual specifics. So is, is Eisner your Hollywood guy? Well, he's a longtime friend. Oh, okay. I've had, been a personal friend of his for, I don't know, 15 years. I kind of feel bad now about all the awful things we've said about him. Well, we're with Katzenberg, so. Well, you know, I think that uh, these, are, these are big issues. <laughs> the country is facing a very difficult time, and I think that this is the kind of thing that should preoccupy major talk show hosts like you. Well, I mean, you don't know, talk about the economy, the world, talk about all the funny sticks that are there, talk about your ranch out there, talk about the kids, talk about whatever. 
I think this has got to be a little bit lower on the list, don't you think? <laughs> oh, well, it's way at the bottom, yeah. <laughs> How was uh, Phil Jackson? Uh, he's kind of been helping you out, hasn't he? Yeah, he is. Phil's uh, participated in a number of events we have, and he's uh, he's really quite good in these kind of settings. Um, he's spoken at a number of uh, fundraisers I have had, and he'll be out campaigning for me. Somebody once said to me, well, what does that mean for the administration? I promised them that uh, I would make him my secretary of defense. <laughs> Talking about Phil Jackson, the former coach, former New York Knickerbocker and, and former coach, as many of you know, of the Chicago Bulls. I wonder if he's ever going to coach again. I think that eventually he will. Oh, you do? I don't know whether it'll be this year or next year, but um, I think that he will coach again. Um, he can pretty much write his own ticket now. He, he's been so successful, six championships. Uh, I was with him the other night in Chicago when they honored him, and it was a very... Uh, it was a night full of a lot of love coming from the people of Chicago toward him for everything that he's accomplished there. It was an error, and the error ended abruptly. Well, that is true. You know, I was talking to my brother last night about, we are talking about the Littleton, Colorado situation and how uh, everybody's getting blamed for this. You know, Katzenberg, Eisner, the gun manufacturers, everybody. And my brother made the observation, I don't know if it's true, I'm just interested in kind of your thoughts about it, that, there, that we, we appeared to have a more focused generation of people when we had a draft, and that we ought to have, if not a draft, we ought to have all young people in this country required to, to, to contribute two years of some sort of community service or national service. So is that anything that makes any sense to you? Well, I think you have something now called AmeriCorps that's available for young people. I think that um, compulsory service is probably not advisable. I think you could probably make it more attractive for people to do it, encourage them to do it. I think that in uh, high schools you could have a requirement of some service in the community so that you'd find people like the kids in the trench coat mafia having an opportunity to have some involvement in their community with another human being and helping that human being. And I think that that is a kind of an experience that is tremendously uh, worthwhile. And you get into compulsory, you get into cost, and you get into whether that's what you want to do for everybody, every kid. Um, I think that it was a tremendous tragedy. I mean, the sadness that must be felt in that community that I felt, that you felt, uh, is uh, very real. I think that uh, the memory of this will be with those kids forever. I think there are a couple of things to uh, take out of this, though. Uh, that is, you know, something's wrong when uh, we have uh, parents that don't know kids are making bombs in the house. And I think something's wrong in a gun-crazy society when high school kids can assemble an arsenal. And I think something's wrong when, you know, uh, younger kids can practice murder on video games. Uh, and I, I think that the key point here is that all of these things are contributing factors, but nobody really knows the answer. Uh, one thing to remember is that, you know, there are 15 or so kids killed every, every week with a gun in America. And that should be, give us some pause. The other thing to remember is that um, most of the kids in America are in families that uh, provide loving beginnings and loving nurturing for them. And they're not in the circumstance of the trench coat mafia. I mean, you know, you see a high school circumstance and we see kids going around as trench coat mafias. <coughs> We've begun to <coughs> concern that... Uh, begin to think that uh, eccentricity is normal. Uh, and in some cases in teenage years it is, but you know, sensitive recognition of kids, giving them some uh, meaning in their life that's deeper in the material, something they can connect to, some service alternative they can have, so that they uh, can, can find something in their life that gives them a sense of self-esteem and commitment is really what we need. And there's no simple answer here. Um, I think what Fred said, in part, would help if we put it into a service context. One of the things I did notice uh, was how articulate, I don't know what it means, but how um, remarkably articulate many of these kids were who were, who were in, involved in the Littleton, Colorado, or went to Columbine High School, more so in many cases than their parents. And so, you know, it is a pretty good generation of folks. And well, I think that, you know, when you, I think it's a great generation of kids. Uh, you know, volunteerism has never been higher on college campuses in America today. I'm, up, I'm with them all the time now, and uh, there's a tremendous spirit. I mean, political participation has never been lower, but that's another problem. 
will try to cure that. But voluntarism has never been higher. And I think this Littleton, Colorado event shocked everybody so much because we recognized that high school as the high school that many of our children go to. And we figure if it happened there, maybe it could happen where I have my child going to school. And that, I think, gave everybody pause and made everybody think more deeply about this tragedy. Senator Bradley, it's always a pleasure to, to uh, talk with you, and uh, obviously we wish you good luck. And Well, you thank can... you very much, Imus. It's a great uh, great uh, opportunity to talk to you always. You can appear uh, on this program anytime you want. Just look at it like not having to buy time. Well, that's great. So well, anytime you want, just call me, and you're on. Okay, well, oh. uh, Chuck and Bernard, I appreciate them there, too. You know. Oh, absolutely. Thank and you very good, much. Good, Senator. good luck on that ranch. Thanks, Bill. Bye. Senator Bill Bradley here on the uh, <laughs> I Miss It Morning program. <laughs> Just had to buy time. That's all. Well, I love this guy, don't you? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a real gentleman. No. It's so uh, bogus to compare Bill Bradley to Al Gore that it's, uh, it's disgraceful. <laughs> and we hope that we can goad uh, Senator Bradley <laughs> into um, personally attacking the vice president and his hideous wife. Yeah. And uh, we'll just, or we'll do it for him. It's uh, 14 till the hour. <laughs> One, two, three. One, two, three. Good morning. I'm Chris Jansing. I'm Miss in the Morning. We'll continue in just a moment. But first, a quick check of today's headlines. Top Chinese officials and family members joined a solemn procession at Beijing Airport as the remains of the three journalists killed in NATO's bombing of the Chinese embassy in Belgrade returned to China today. But 20 people wounded in the attack also returned on the flight and were met by a procession of ambulances. For the first time since the NATO attack spawned protests in China, the U.S. ambassador to China left the embassy compound. The embassy had been under a siege of demonstrators who threw rocks, broke windows, and splattered the building with paint. I think we were all surprised by the fury of these demonstrations, including, I think, the Chinese government. I don't think anyone really anticipated the depth of the anger of the Chinese people about this uh, terrible, terrible tragedy. Air raid sirens have sounded in Belgrade at this hour as Operation Allied Force heads into day 50. NATO is calling strikes overnight the best day yet of the campaign. Military officials say Allied planes set a new bombing record by flying more than 600 sorties overnight. They say targets included Serb ground forces throughout Serbia and Kosovo. NATO says there's still no sign any Serb troops are withdrawing from Kosovo, even though Yugoslavia announced a partial pullout had begun. The alliance says either way, the move falls short of NATO demands. Military officials say NATO will soon begin launching attacks on Yugoslavia from airfields in Hungary and Turkey. The Turkish foreign minister said today its military has agreed to provide air bases for Allied planes. Hungary announced last week that American warplanes would conduct combat missions from its bases. NBC has learned that Russian President Boris Yeltsin has fired his entire cabinet. Just a few hours earlier, Yeltsin fired Prime Minister Yevgeny Primakov. The Kremlin says Primakov failed to rescue Russia's crumbling economy. The move is expected to anger Russia's lower house of parliament, which is scheduled to start impeachment proceedings against Yeltsin tomorrow. This turmoil comes as Russia tries to help broker a diplomatic solution to the crisis in Kosovo. An advisor tells reporters that Yeltsin will pull out of Kosovo peace talks if NATO rejects Russia's proposals. The U.S. government may pay for the families of those killed on board Pan Am Flight 103 to travel to the trial of the bombing suspects. The funding is included in a bill Congress is scheduled to vote on next week. The 1988 explosion over Lockerbie, Scotland killed 270 people. The two Libyans suspected in the bombing will be tried in the Netherlands. Government news agencies in Mexico report authorities will not let villagers living near the so-called Volcano of Fire return to their homes they were evacuated Monday when the volcano Kalima began spitting out lava. The eruption triggered brush fires and spewed out a mushroom-shaped cloud for about four miles high. And that's the latest. I'm Chris Jansing. I'm in the morning. is back in just a moment. I say it's cute. He said it's dirty old. Who is? Hey, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Charles, I'm going to call this guy of a war criminal from Speed Vision. you got to jump all over me. Five minutes after the hour, and I am I, Mr. Warning. Coming up in just a little bit, an essay on Michael Ovitz. Man, is that a... What a joke that is. Uh, Jesus, this, you talk about juiceless jerks out of Hollywood. Grief. This is pathetic. And no wonder David Geffen hates him. And, sure. of course, Geffen's our guy. It's sad to learn that... Uh, well, I knew this, but sad to learn that Michael Eisner, that big phony, uh, thieving, bullfrog-looking doofus, is uh, in Bradley's camp because... Yeah. Uh, We've socked it in with a little midget who, by the way, we also hate, Katzenberg, but you got to pick a side. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he's our Jew in this fight. That's the deal. So, <laughs> <laughs> what? You, you got to have a Jew in a fight, gotta baby. You've got to pick a Jew. You've got to pick a fight? Jew, and he's what our Jew in this fight. You? Well, that's a, he's our God. Jew. He's our Hollywood Jew right. boy, Chuck. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we got it. <laughs> man, oh man. Uh, also, uh, coming up. You embarrass me. I understand that. Uh, Hollywood Hogan and a, a, a brand new lame Eminem song parody, and we'll talk with uh, war criminal Roger Williams, who is the head of Speed Vision. Whoa, mm -hmm. war <laughs> criminal? Yes, war criminal. The man thief. who uh, war criminal? Yes. What in the heck are you talking about? <laughs> Roger Williams from Speed He's Vision. He's not a war criminal. By the way, one of our very proud national sponsors Absolutely. here on the I Miss the Morning program. But uh, yeah. just because you should, just because you like Speed Vision. Or you want to get it added it. to your cable channel lineup? Uh, don't confuse that with this guy, with the guy who heads Speed oh, Vision. Oh come on! Who uh, who should be horsewhipped oh, for trying ridiculous. to actually steal my truck? He didn't try. He tried to steal my truck. He did not try to steal, 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 steal it. Truck. He tried to steal oh, it. Oh, that's just so. Stupid. We'll get to the bottom of it. Coming up, my 1955 right. Cameo truck. Y'all can see it on MSNBC, and you can just imagine it in your head there on the radio. It's a War beautiful Pitbull. 55 Cameo that's great. pickup, and they wanted to steal it. They did and not. take they it back to Chicago and try to sell it. They wanted to break it on top of you. Simply to borrow it. Well, they're going to borrow it. Anyway, uh, Andrea Mitchell's on the phone from the State Department. Let's talk to her first um, about uh, Primakov, who will continue sitting on a lily uh, pad in the Budweiser commercials. <laughs> but apparently it's not going to be the premier <laughs> no, or not. whatever he was. What was he, Andrea? Prime Minister. <laughs> prime Minister. Prime Minister. Take one step back. No, he's not beginning. now, is he? So. Not now. And the entire cabinet has now been sacked. Yeltsin has gone on television. Uh, this is <laughs> Boris Yeltsin uh, looking uh, sort of like one of your old buddies, Don Iman. Yeah. He, he really looks awful. He looks uh, like me in the... Well, you know, if I'd have been on television back in the 80s, back in 81, that's me. I was going to say that, but that would have been rude. No, no, no. It would have been accurate, though. So. But uh, this, this is bad. I mean, Pope Talbot arrived yesterday. Yesterday, the State Department was telling us that Talbot was very uh, positive, was going to be meeting with Chernyar Medin, who had just come back from China, and looked forward to all of these meetings with, you know, clearly with Primakov and others in the government, they were relying on Russia principally to try to broker a peace agreement for Kosovo and were a little bit concerned that Chernyamin had come back from Beijing spouting the Chinese line, which is that there has to be a bombing halt before anything can happen. And now all of a sudden, Boris Yeltsin sacks the cabinet. He looks like, you know, he's got one foot in the grave and has been either taking too much medicine or too much... Uh, Whatever. It looks drunk. Yeah. Andrea, that's okay. what he looks. He, <laughs> he looks, looks like a very fat drunk. drunk on television. That's what it looks like. Yeah. So. Okay. And you know the the, the uh, stock exchange there is reeling. This will require. You know, he said he did it for reasons of economic stability, but clearly he he was concerned about an impeachment vote tomorrow in the lower house, the Duma, and this freezes everything in place. Even if the house, which now will proceed most likely and impeach him. Even when they vote on that, the upper house would have to go along with it, as would the constitutional courts. Um, that's not going to happen. Any prime minister that he appoints, he's got this interim appointment, which is the uh, Stepashin, the head of the security forces. Uh, any prime minister that he appoints has to be confirmed. After three prime ministers are appointed and not and rejected by the Duma, which is also very likely, um, everything is frozen in place, and he can try to dismiss the Duma. So Yeltsin is still playing these political cards. Every time we think he's, you know, dead and buried, he pulls something like this. Well, so what, what does this mean now to us, other, aside from what it, the impact it has on the situation in Yugoslavia? Well, it, it has a big econom economic impact. The, the uh, currency, the euro in Europe is tumbling, and a, an unstable Russia with all of those nukes is not something you want to see. This is not just 
another country uh, that we have to not really worry about. This is a country with nuclear weapons. I'm surprised they don't get a bunch of them just running there and pounce on him and lock him up, <laughs> you know? Well, that, that could still happen. I mean, this is not is not voting well for any kind of long-term constitutional improvement or economic improvement in Russia. And, I mean, in, in a way, it's a good thing that Talbot is there, but who is he going to talk to? You know, Primakov was not our guy. Primakov was always very hostile, very anti-American, um, you know, anti-Israel, made his career with Saddam Hussein and others, and, in, in fact, in the um, it does Arab like world. But at least we had... A, a growing relationship with him and we thought we could deal with him. Chernia Merdin had always been our guy, had always been the, the Al Gore counterpart. And so the U.S. was quite pleased when Chernia Merdin took over this account handling Kosovo. What what this means for Kosovo, though, is really very unclear. Have uh, we heard from C.C. Ryder yet, our Secretary of State? <laughs> <laughs> with the steps and hats. And yeah, where's she now? Well, she is uh, <laughs> very very much in Washington. I, I don't think that you're going to hear very much from her until Talbot has a chance to figure out what's going on. I think that everybody's going to be laying low and saying it's an internal affair, but of course it isn't. Yeah. And the president doesn't say anything, right? Unlikely. Doesn't even know about it yet. He's golfing. Yeah, he's playing golfer. <laughs> he's at a fundraiser. <laughs> a fundraiser. Yeah. Donnie Chung. <laughs> did you see that testimony? Yeah, yeah I did say some of it. You know what? I've, one of the things I was struck by, I, I came away from I saw a huge excerpt of it on uh, McNeil Lair, Lair, whatever the hell you call it now, and then I saw some more with Brian Williams. But I, uh, I, uh, I came away from that liking Mr. Chung. Well, he he is very likable. I mean, yeah, he, I mean he's he, had, he had sort of a very um, unsophisticated approach to all of this. You know, he forced his way into the White House, offering money and uh, offering money to the first lady's chief of staff. He sort of didn't go through any normal. Roots. He just laid it all out there. Well, he's clearly lying, but that's... I find that charming in this particular case. What else is he going to do? He's got to lie. So. <laughs> all right, thank you, Andrea. Andrea Mitchell, State yes. Department, for NBC News at 12 minutes after the hour. What else going on, Charles? Uh, well, Chernin Mitterrand returned to Moscow last night, and he had aligned himself with China's demand for an unconditional halt in the bombing. He said, in order to sit at the table of negotiations, bombing should be stopped. Slays cannot be put in front of a horse. NATO now dismisses Yugoslavia's claim to have pulled some troops out of Kosovo. Said, no, it didn't happen. Apparently, it's not going to. Which Chernobyl Mirden had called a step toward peace, urging NATO to reciprocate somehow. But uh, apparently, that didn't happen. NATO pilots have had their busiest day since the air war against Yugoslavia began. The Alliance says its uh, aircraft struck several bridges and airfields, causing sig significant damage to Serb military forces. Bo Deedles here with his power tie this that, morning. Yeah. Good morning, Bo. How are Good you? Good morning, Don. Good morning, Chuck. Do you care about what's going on in Russia now? Or you do? I do. I oh, yeah. I'm a little worried yeah. about what's mm -hmm. going on in Russia with them nuclear warheads they have. And you know what it is? They need money. They don't have food. Mike the Russian was telling me the other day, a good friend of mine that makes my cufflinks and stuff. Well, another he gangster said, friend of yours? No, no. He's from 47th Street, Mike the Russian. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you the truth. He said they don't have food over there. They don't have w running water in a lot of the towns. And no. these people are really uh, in bad shape in Russia. And when people get in bad shape, anything can happen. They'll sell these suitcase bombs and stuff. I'm why, very worried. Uh, why does a guy who was a... Uh, we've been over this many times, but I was a guy who was essentially a hero of the New York City Police Department, you, and then runs one of the most successful uh, private detective agencies, investigative firms in the country, hang around with so many gangsters. I don't get that. I don't hang out with gangsters. I don't. Yes, I, you do. I've seen all the time with them. I've been rails. No, no, no. no. Just because they're Italian doesn't matter. Well, no, no. I didn't say that. that I didn't no, no. No, no. They're gangsters. The right? only gangster hanging around is Pots and Pans, but if you notice, Where he's not here today. Pans, I is. suspended yeah. him today. He you suspended did something him. wrong. He did something wrong, and he knows what he did. He's out there listening, I'm sure. Right. And this is for all the children out there. Remember, when you tell the truth, you don't have to remember what you said, and yeah. we'll leave it at that. He lied to you. No, I'm not saying that. It's not to be discussed on the air. He'll be back, and we're going to the big Star Wars thing. We were going to suspend him because... Yeah. Uh, he, he continues to see such a... He's not the brightest guy on the planet, by the way. Well, no, his elevator ain't going all the way up all the time. No, now. and he continues to say things on the radio and uh, that are offensive. And, well, he uh, really doesn't mean it. You know what it is? Yeah, but, but, but I mean, come, uh, hello. Just, yeah. I, I, and plus, I, I, plus, plus, you know, it's on, uh, it's on uh, MSNBC. I mean, we have some responsibility to them as well. Exactly. You know? I, I kind of agree, and that's why I want him to think about it this morning. That's why I suspended him. Because of that remark he made uh, two weeks ago. With Actually, I don't really care what anybody says on the radio. Yeah. Just between you and me. Well, Embers NBC is an important, uh, important well, thing here. I like him. They I don't pick, want to embarrass him. They picked my computer cop as number one software. They they uh, had it on, on, on the web as being the number one software. 
Last week we gave a thousand one tough computer cops away, you know, from computer concepts. How did this turn? Uh, how did this get from you hanging around with a gangster? MSNBC. Joey to you, in a trunk. To, to Joey in a trunk to plug in one computer well, cop. Well, you said MSNBC, so I'm just playing out to MSNBC. <laughs> oh, okay. we love MSNBC. Well, I, I don't know about that. I just want to embarrass him. I, I like the people there. I like Bob Wright. And gee, he's been very nice to well, us. Well, we I love Jack Welch. We love Jack And we Welch. love Neutron Jack, who has a <laughs> fake slate roof on his cheesy house. Ooh. It's fair for him, by the way. <laughs> he okay. could hit the but, ball. But, um, you know... I mean, if Joey's going to say stuff, say it on the radio. Wait till we're off at MSNBC. I mean, he's got plenty of time to be filthy. Right. I, don't I, I think he kind of understands. You don't get I, by with anything on the radio. I think so. he kind of understands. You know how far out we went for you? We went, we're going to be at the premiere of Star Wars. We paid $2,000 a ticket for Sloan Kettering. Wow. To be at the premiere, Joey and I will be there Sunday for the premiere of Star Wars. I'd rather take a speed drill and drive it through my head than be there on a Sunday. I'd be playing golf. But because we are movie review people, we will be at the premiere in the limousine. Joey's got extra pair of dark glasses. He really thinks he's an actor. He walks, he waves to everybody. And people this is, uh, no, that's kind of, well, the movie, I mean... It's an event. I mean, do you, have you seen any of the other Star Wars yeah. movies? I, I did, and I really personally, I'm, uh, I I'm hate to say that. it, I'm not into it, but I will go to the movie. I will watch the You're movie. Into Joe Pesci kicking somebody in the forehead. Who's this effing Obi Wan Kenobi thing over here? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? At a 60 out of the here. hour here on the Amazon Morning Program. More Bo Deedle coming up, but right now, have we been able to get a hold of Fred? Negative. So we can't, we can't raise Fred, but oh, here now man. is the uh, president of Speed Vision. Roger Williams. Good morning, Mr. Williams. Good morning, Don. How are you? I'm fine. I want to apologize for characterizing you as a war criminal. I was just kidding around. Well, that's all right. It's not the first time and probably won't be the last time. Uh, how about, how does this sound? Yuppie thief. Is that better? <laughs> well, you know, um, anything works. Here's the thing. They, w w w it's no better. No, that's no. no better. I'm sorry, Mr. Williams. That's no better. Okay, Speed Vision, of course, is, uh, is one of our very uh, uh, loyal sponsors. Right. And uh, they've had a campaign going for some time now to try to get people to call their local cable company and uh, get the cable company to add Speed Vision to their uh, cable channel lineup because, speaking of organized crime, most of these uh, cable companies are controlled by organized crime figures. You Wouldn't go. you agree with that, Mr. Williams? <laughs> well, you said it. I didn't. <laughs> so, uh, but if you can't get it added to your cable channel lineup, but you ought to be able to, but if you yeah. can't, it is Channel 306 on the DirecTV satellite deal. And it's fun. They run it's old terrific. biker movies, and they have uh, they they cover a race. They cover NASCAR stuff and everything that moves. It's a good channel, but it, uh, but don't but don't, don't confuse that with uh, Mr. Williams, <laughs> who tried to steal my truck. <laughs> uh, what is your uh, tell me the, tell me your version? I have this 1955 ground up restored uh, 55 Cameo mm -hmm. uh, pickup out in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Gorgeous. My pickup, gorgeous, gorgeous, yeah, pick, pickup. Beautiful restoration. And it's for sale in the uh, Autobot Express uh, catalog at $117,000. Mm -hmm. All of the money, by the way, if you want, can go to the ranch. You can you can even make the check out to the ranch, and yeah. the ranch is a 50C3 public foundation, so you get an enormous tax deduction benefit as a result of that. Plus, you would get the truck. However, uh, I get a call from Fred and Bob out at the ABX, and uh, they tell me that they're shipping it back to Chicago because Speed Vision uh, wanted to do something with it, and, and I, I knew nothing about it. So tell me what happened, Mr. Williams. Well, basically, Don, we're going to be in Chicago the second week of June, and uh, we were looking for something just to, you know, have as a vehicle to get around town while we were there. <laughs> you, what? You, what, what? Yeah. <laughs> we were thinking about just taking it for a little joy ride for the summer. When we got done there, we are going to go to Milwaukee, and then uh, we are just going to cruise around the Midwest for a while. I hear you. I hear you. Well, what were you really going to do with it? <laughs> well, actually, there's a big cable convention in Chicago, and uh, one of the things we do at our display is we always have different, uh, pretty unique and interesting vehicles on, on display to get people to come in and talk to us. And the, these are cable operators who are trying to get to come in, those organized crime figures you mentioned. <laughs> um, and we've had, we've had a lot of uh, pretty neat stuff there. We've had uh, Craig Breedlove's uh, Spirit of America rocket car. We've had uh, Mika Hakkinen's McLaren Mercedes Formula One car. We've had the uh, Ferrari Formula One car. Yeah, no, nobody cares about this. We've had all kinds of stuff. And yeah. we've, uh, you know, we thought your vehicle would be a uh, terrific uh, tension getter. Seeing the I Man's uh, truck would be great, wouldn't it? It'd be why terrific. Wouldn't, why wouldn't we call me then? Well, that's a good question. Um, uh, you know, I guess basically, you know, all of us, including Fred and uh, Bob, all thought that you'd say no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, so just when, do you, when is the convention? <laughs> it's uh, it's June 11th. It's June 11th through the 15th. 
Okay. And actually, Don, I think this would be a good investment for you. Why? Well, because we're going to have a film crew there. We're going to do uh, some specials on the vehicles that will be in our booth, and then you can print a supplement to the catalog and say as featured on Speed Vision and raise the price by $100,000. Oh. I have 15 million people listening to me on the radio, and you have 200 watching that <laughs> stupid cable channel of yours with these, uh, with these uh, uh, toothless goobers and biker movies and, uh, and NASCAR nitwits racing around <laughs> at 200 miles an hour at Talladega. Well, I actually have Peter Fonda there, too. No. All right, here's, here's what I will do. Mm-hmm. You have to use horseless carriage. Okay. Okay. I'll let you take the truck back if when you're done with it, you then bring it on uh, to my... Uh, I'll put it up to, in my garage up in Connecticut. Oh, sure. You'll do that? Absolutely. No, right, I'll let you do that. I'll uh, deliver it myself. No, I don't want you coming to my <laughs> house Stay in away. Connecticut. Well, I wanted to find out where you live in case I need to know that <laughs> later on. You're, you're not going to need to know anything. You're going to be in the trunk of your car if you keep this up. So uh, you can make arrangements. I guess call Bob and make arrangements with him. That's great, Don. And, uh, but we now you have to bring the truck to Connecticut when you're done. I understand that. And if any damage to it, you have to pay for it. We'll take care of everything. We've never scratched anything yet. All right. Thanks, Roger. Uh, thank you, Don. Roger Williams, a yuppie crook from Speed Vision. Um... <laughs> uh, so if you're going to be at the big cable show in Chicago, June 11th. You can you can actually actually I'll tell you what I'm, the the truck is for sale now. Yeah, and it's for sale for at least 117 thousand. I wish you can give to the ranch if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we we'll just then we can just pick it up in Chicago, and if not, I'll bring it back here, and Deadman Wyatt can drive it around to right. Heyday or whatever. It is 21 after the hour here in the Irish Morning Park. Have we been able to get a hold of Fred yet? Negative. Okay. Uh, here's Howard Stern now. Good morning, Howard. How are you? I see. Well, firecracker, Eddie. For me? Really? Well. <laughs> Makes Al Gore look like a victim of Tourette syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got an idea how we can get that CBS stock up over 75 by Friday. Oh. You come over here and spank the lesbians. I'll go over there and talk to Andy Mitchell and Claire Shipman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to be as smart as you. How hard can it be? Hey, Andrew, this Kosovo deal. What's that about? <laughs> you know, seeing as how Charles has changed his image more times than Madonna, he might actually enjoy turning himself into a fat black woman. <laughs> you don't know how lucky you are to have the people you have working for you. I'd like to see you spend four hours in a studio with the African-American version of Sybil. <laughs> Robin's got more mood swings than a premenstrual manic depressive on crack. There's not enough Prozac in the world to mellow that woman out. My life's a nightmare. I have a producer as a cross between Forrest Gump and The Missing Link. Bernie may be bald, but at least he doesn't look like he goes to a dentist in Sarajevo. <laughs> I don't know who you have over there for your resident stand-up comedian, but he's got to be better than Jackie the Joke Man. A fat white guy doesn't do anything but whine and don't plug his comedy club dates enough. Come on, let's change places. I've copied you long enough. I want to see if I can apply everything I've learned over the years. Have mercy. Buy a Jeep. Don't be no creep. <laughs> God almighty. Everybody say baby. Howard Stern here on the um, I Miss of the Morning program. It's 23 after the hour. Bo Deedle's coming up. <laughs> Hello out there. We're about ready to begin our program. It's a beautiful day in Chicago, and we're going to have a wonderful time this afternoon. I want to acknowledge the presence of the man that made and named it Mr. Winston Moore, director, our own beloved... I miss in the morning. All right, if you're a fan of NASCAR, catch this weekend then. Mark Multicultural Festival at King's Plaza Mall in Brooklyn, May 15th and 16th. I'm Lori McNichol for the next Dell Communications Fan Highway Patrol. So I was talking to Senator Bill Bradley this morning, Fred, yes. and I suggested to him uh, your idea of uh, requiring uh, all young folks, all people that get out of high school, to commit to two years of compulsory service of some sort to the country. And... Um, because what was your point about when we had the draft and all that? Well, you, you don't have 17-year-old kids hanging around in, in the mall, you know. You have kids that are feel like they're they're that they have some they build up their self-esteem by doing stuff like that. Feel like they have a purpose, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not an original thought, but I've thought about it for years that that was one of the would be a solution, you know. But as you pointed out, with the uh, 
and Charles and I are talking about this too, with their kids in Littleton, Colorado, the vast majority of them are actually remarkably uh, well-adjusted, uh, astonishingly articulate, mm-hmm. bright kids, who, by the way, also have been watching the same movies and playing the same video games that Eric Harris and the other kid were right. doing. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't have anything to do with video games and movies and the and the NRA. It doesn't have anything to do with that. Just to reflect on this a moment. In 1933, we didn't have uh, violent movies, didn't have pornography, didn't have a big drug problem, didn't have uh, video games. But Hitler was to turn a whole generation of Germans into murderers. He did that without those allies. So it doesn't have it has to do with hate. That's what it is. Well, some of it is, of course, uh, perpetuated by, but not all of it. I agree. With and you. then look, and and here, and we, you can have the same thing happen today, which is kind of amazing to me, is that any reasonable person on the planet would would uh, think that what Milosevic doing is wrong. I mean, you wouldn't find anybody that would think that was wrong, except. You have Russia and China that think it's okay. So you have that today. You have two two major countries in this world that think, hey, it's okay what he's doing. Well, they've done much of the same thing. I think you may. You wouldn't find anybody in this country who think anybody's willing to think it was right, don't you? Yes. Yeah, I mean, you, you, to go maybe, in... Maybe you just got up. Or... It is. No, I mean, no, I'm, I'm just saying. You, you, we you get... What? We understand what you're saying. Don't we, John? Uh-huh. I, believe, I, I believe I get his point. Mm-hmm. Yes, I do. We have, you have a good point. Yes, you do. Well, you're back to have a very great point. For a change. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, talk to the guy from Speed Vision. You did, Roger Williams. Yeah. How's he doing? Well, he hasn't been indicted yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I told him they could take my truck back to Chicago if they then delivered it uh, up to the garage in Connecticut and had to use horses' carriage. Is that, mm. what, I, is that what I should have told him? Yes. Oh, okay. And it's it's actually probably cheaper for them to do it that way. You know, rather than ship it from here to Chicago and have to ship it back, yeah. just ship it on, uh, you know, from Chicago to Connecticut. Can I keep the Texas license plates on it, or no? <laughs> or get me some New Mexico license plates. I get plate. you some New Mexico ones. Can you get me some personalized New Mexico ones? What, what would you want it to say? A hole. A hole. A hole. <laughs> sure. Jackass. A hole driving. What do you think it's a hole? Well, uh, I'm not a fan of personalized plates. No, I'm not. I think you should just go get a license plate and take right. what number you get. You know? I, I agree with that. I'm kidding. Brett. I mean, just like going to jail, you know, you just get the number they give you, yeah. you know, or buy something new. You can get a vanity number. <laughs> hey, Fred, how you doing? It's Bo I'm here. doing very fine, uh, Bo. How you doing? Very good, sweetie. How's the ranch coming along? Coming along great. You ready for me there yet? No, well, you not. never know. It might be ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> alcohol. There's going to be alcohol in the ranch because I have to have a canteen. I'm going to be out there. I think I'm going out to Vegas in a couple weeks. I may fly over there and say hello to you. Well, call me when you, you know, and we'll take you going out there. Plan B is always uh, <laughs> Bo Diddle, Jimmy the Wags, <laughs> Finney Pepitone. And others. <laughs> it is 33 after the hour. Fred, I love you. I'll call you later. All righty. Bye. It's uh, 33 after the hour here in the Irish <laughs> Morning Program. We're going to do a couple more commercials, and then we're going to talk with Bo Deedle, who's got a movie review. Now, Great Bo one. suspended uh, Joey Poston Penn because Joey apparently lied about something, right? No, no, no. It's it's okay. It's, it's between Joey and I, but I just want him to think about it. He's out there listening. Just think about it, Joe, and leave it at that. We always have room for forgiveness. The Lord tells us, I shall forgive, and Bo will forgive, too. Uh, Amen. Amen. Amen, Bo. All right. Well, Joey, uh, otherwise, if you don't forgive. <laughs> what, uh, what, what kind of gun is that, by the way? A uh, Walter P88. It's a 16-shot uh, automatic gun. It's a, it's a, it's probably one of the finest guns made, uh, 9 millimeters. It's really good. The only problem with it is when you're shooting, if you use the wrong ammunition, it jamitates. Mm. I was at the range a few times, and it's not fun if you're in the middle of trying to uh, shoot somebody yeah. and your gun jams it could good. Ruin the whole gun happens. the whole gun battle could be like ruined that sucks so. have you ever uh, shot at anybody no comment what no comment Bob? 34 after the hour, we'll talk with the murderer, <laughs> Bo Diddle. <laughs> <laughs> the hitman. <laughs> uh, coming up. <laughs> if Jesus came to your house to spend a day or two, if he came without warning, 
I wonder what you do. I'm a in the morning. For years now, you've looked to carrier air conditioners to improve your home's environment. Now you can look to carry to improve the air Good morning, everyone. I'm John Siegenthaler, and coming up on Morning Line, Russian President Boris Yeltsin is demanding to be a player in peace talks between NATO and Yugoslavia. But his own government is in turmoil this morning after he once again fired his prime minister. Can NATO really rely on Russia for helping to bring peace to Yugoslavia? We'll find out today on Morning Line. Plus, protests over the bombing of the Chinese embassy have eased, but life is still very difficult for Americans in Beijing. We'll find out what's in store for so many couples nervously waiting the adoption of Chinese babies. We will also talk about the many lawsuits that could come as a result of the massacre at Columbine High School. Fingers are being pointed all over the place. And for Star Wars fans, a monumental day, and it's just to buy tickets for the upcoming movie. We'll let you know how you can get them without camping out, camping out that is. It's all at the top of the hour on Morning Line. Chris and I will see you then. About two dollars, two dollars a piece. It's all all around the city. At Dwayne Reed, all the drug chains got. It's a great sponsor. It happens to be really good stuff, and you can use it on your Gentiles too. Oh, fine, Bob. <laughs> yes, if you go with somebody and you're not sure about them, spray X14, and you'll be sure. <laughs> no, you really are just I'm like a moron. <laughs> By the way, uh, attention, MSNBC. We don't want uh, we don't want that uh, hairhead uh, Siegenthaler doing any updates on our show. We want uh, the, we want the babe, Chris. What's her name? The news bunny. We want the news bunny. We don't want that news bimbo. the hotties in there. We don't news want hot. we don't want John the bimbo Siegenthaler yeah. uh, screwing up our uh, program here. We got uh, enough ugly guys on the show. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> including beginning with you, Terry, you <laughs> fat moose. Yeah. Anyway, Eat a here's salad, the, Terry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jenny Craig, Sally. Hello, <laughs> Jenny. Craig. <laughs> you, you know, Don, before yeah. before we go to the movie review, we're going to review one movie. I'm going to review one movie in dedicated oh, case to uh, Joey. But, you know, last week we gave away a thousand of the software. Very poor. Well, software is what now? One tough computer cop. From well, what does it do? It, it monitors your kids. Whatever the kid sees on the, in whatever the kid does on the Internet, whether it looks at photographs, neo-Nazi groups, anything like that, it comes up and you, and you monitor the Internet. We, uh, we had 1,000 given away. The calls went crazy. I'm going to give in behalf of you and 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 Wyatt. There, I'm giving another thousand away to the first callers. What are me and Wyatt got no, to do I mean, with, you, with your computer I mean, for the children. Scam deal. For the children. No, we're giving them away for free oh. for the children out there in, in the name of your son. Because I love you. This is so parents can no, monitor what their kids are doing on the. Uh on the internet. The MSNBC yeah. rated it number one of all software. But yeah, the, how do people get it now? Okay, you could call 1-800-311-3114. That's 1-800-311-3114. Last week we weren't equipped to handle it, but we're equipped now. Chuck Schumer, our new senator from the United States. Who is a dirtbag. No, let me way. tell you something. I, I would, hate him. I'm going to tell you something. We, we loathe him. Well, he looked at he this. Is, he's, he's a Robert Torres. No, 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 no. Don't even he compare is, him with that little he, punk Torricelli. He is a weasel. Now, Bo was a D'Amato guy, but I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. I made one phone call to Charles Schumer. I said, please look at this. This is important for kids, important for parents and yeah. all that. He sent the letter with the computer. He tested the computer software. Sent the letter to the president of the United States, President Bill Clinton, over here. Who is also a dirtbag. And dirt he bag, mentions it. He endorses. Wait, wait, we should monitor his computer. No, no, no. He's checking out the, the deal. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> Downloading <laughs> the porno on him. What are you nuts? No, here you, you, you would align yourself with those two weasels. No, no. I said two Chuck. of the most dis no, no, dis you know, disreputable people on the planet. Yeah, your friend Chuck the schmuck of Schumer. No, no, and no, that no. Dirtbed redneck pedophile. No, we rather have the other guy. Bill Clinton. What are you nuts? We rather have the other guy. Vice President, yep, yep, that's like goofy, yeah. He can be my president. I'd rather have the Pip as my president than that guy from Princeton. Hey, this thing fisting? It's a, <laughs> I never knew about this one. You know, this is cool, uh, man. Oh, yeah. you, right you, up to my Rolex. You are, a, you are a disgraceful human being. You're unbelievable. Well, I see how fast you suck up. That guy said words that I didn't understand. What's no, no, his no, vocabulary? No, no, we've liked Bill Bradley yeah, forever. Yeah. For this week, you like Bill Bradley. No, no, no. George no, no. W. Bush Jr. Is will George be the next w. president of the United a States. Gutless weasel. Drunk. He's the man. He's a drunk, besides, isn't he? No, no he's not. not. He doesn't no. drink. He's a John McCain. You, you, John like McCain's a George W. Bush was a punk smoking dope and and, and excuse me and, and, and yeah. snorting well, coke in you? college and won't well, what cop were you to doing? it. And pardon me, what were you doing? I'm not running for president. Well, either am I. I was doing <laughs> drugs and being in phone booth. Now what? <laughs> I was. I took more. I took enough acid to, 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 to uh, load in one of those Chevy vans GMC gave me. What are you talking about? I'm not running for anything. Well, excuse me. I'll do what the hell I feel well, like doing. Uh, we love 
George W. Bush. We I don't might, like George like W. Bush. George, you like George? <laughs> I like John McCain. Well, how can you walk with John McCain? I, I do like John McCain. I do like yeah. George McCain. W. Bush. Is a is a is a. Yeah, I got your Bush. <laughs> Oh, okay. Now, Silver spoon. Now let me tell you something. You missed the big book party. Jimmy the Wags the other night. What book party? Hey, Jimmy the Wags <laughs> Monday night. We had the big book party oh, at Maruka. He called me. And let me tell you something. What a yeah, party! The book party. Who was there? Oh, let me oh, tell you something. We had friends. we had uh, uh, Tom Cruise, Madonna, Cher. It was like, really a bust out <laughs> thing. We had Chuck Zito from the Hell's Angels there watching God. I mean, we really had a great, great hey, Jimmy, turnout. That was funny. <laughs> there were some other guys there that, that had the noses a little bent out of shape, but uh, otherwise it was a great party. Was there any celebrities at this party? I just told you, Tom Cruise, Madonna, Cher, yeah. you Chuck name Zito. him. <laughs> Chuck Zito, my main man from the Hell's Angels. Ruth Buzzy. Uh, Did Joey, you make <laughs> Joey Pot. <laughs> Soupy. The book is doing great. The, no, Jimmy I'm the way. Well aware of that. Yeah. So, and you know we bought the movie right. I understand. Both Jimmy the, the Wags uh, book, uh, Street Stories of a Private Eye, published by William Morrow. It's laugh out loud. Fabulous. Funny. So it'll be nothing to do with any other scam. Both guys. No, no, we bought on. the rights. Me and me and I Stevie. That. Me and Stevie bought the rights. You and what's going on? No, 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 <laughs> Let's go get the money borrowed from Trump. <laughs> it's 16 till they are. We'll get to this movie review coming up, but we don't have enough time now. Hey, hey, Mom said the way you move will make you sweat, will make you groove. I must in the morning. Time now for another healthcare highlight from Hackensack University. Got a piece of it. Oh, Larry Hughes goes in hard. The big jam won't go. Magic the other way. Hardaway dunks one down on the fast break. Boy, Penny Hardaway says. Let me show you how, young fella. <laughs> Magic, turn back the Sixers. Good morning. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Breen with sports. Dennis Newman, Jeff Turner, the call. WDBO in Orlando. Oh, mighty. You're talking about a couple of losers. <laughs> this sports, Good job, fellas. Good, Good guys. <laughs> this sportscast sponsored by your New York, New Jersey Subaru dealer, Anthony Hardaway. And the Magic stopping the Sixers. 79-68. Tie the series at one apiece. The key for Orlando, finding an answer for the answer. That's what they call Allen Iverson. The answer who had 30 in game one, but only 13 last night. Hardaway talked about stopping Iverson. My job at the beginning of the game was to leave Eric Snow and to go and trap Allen Iverson. And that's why I didn't really shoot the ball at all. I didn't shoot the ball at all in the first quarter because my job was to get the ball out of his hands and not let him get going early and let Eric Snow try to beat us. And that's something that we just can't have happen. If we want to win this series, we're going to have to get the ball out of Allen Iverson's hands and double every chance yeah. to get. And, yeah, he's now, probably, hey, yeah. and now, Bo Deedle on Allen Iverson. Yeah, yeah, he's probably the answer for the warrant of the armed robber who's wanted for the last eight years. <laughs> that's the answer. Who stole the purse? I don't think it's necessary. To disparage Come on. My friend Allen Iverson. Do me a favor. Half of this NBA, if they weren't playing basketball, they'd be doing a little timeization. Well, that's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah, the National yeah. Burglar Association. Thug, thug so, so here's the thing. So, yeah. so you're offended when people characterize all Italians as being thugs. Yeah. And here you now are maligning excuse our me. brothers in the no, NBA. No, excuse me. I That's worked for saying. the brothers. I was a detective in Harlem, Bedford Stuyvesant. I worked for the brothers. Out. I, when I worked for the brothers, I used to see black-on-black -black crime, which a lot of people don't want to admit. It's out there. People are people. I don't see black. I don't see white. When I talk about the brothers, I'm talking about when you go through college and you can't say duh or D, there's a problem here. <laughs> why, why, did, why did I get you involved in this? You know what, what? I mean? How do you almost, get, how did almost, they, Georgetown so University, <laughs> Georgetown University graduate, dun, 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 fine here. Talk, Take your put pen two back. syllables together. That will be fine. Thank you, Bo. We'll talk to Bo Deedle later. My brain continues. <laughs> Darrell Armstrong did a great job on Iverson. Armstrong, before every game, drinks a cup of coffee. Which I wouldn't be. Uh, I wouldn't be making fun of the way people talk. I don't Excuse think me, that's I, where you want to go. Do you I think? am not like I was doing wrinkle jokes. I am not now. that articulate. <laughs> but I listened to Bill Bradley today. He's very articulate. But I didn't understand half the words that he was talking about. <laughs> Excuse me, but if I went to college and got a graduate, a doctorate degree from an uh, affiliated college, a great college with these PhD things, and I can't say. Hey, can you come with me, please? It's, hey, man, can you come with you, go, please? Now you're really starting to sound yeah, almost yeah, like yeah. one of the people you criticize. That's my point. <laughs> you, you really are just a, you're, 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 you should be locked up. <laughs> Jesus, I mean, Bo, huh? I mean, honestly, God, the, you're just better off if you just focus on something else. <laughs> go ahead, Mike. Big time track record was broken the other day, and the 100-meter dash shattered the other day by a guy named Irwin Jaskulski. Yeah, he had somebody's wallet and he's running. Well, that would be fine. Wait a minute. We no, no, that. hang on. There's a kibasi at the finish line, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Irwin ran the 100 meters in 24 seconds. 
Now, you might not say that's not a record. Well, he's it 95 is. 95 years old, right? 95 and over category. Oh. He's 96 years old. Oh, he no, ran the 100 right. meters in 24 seconds. That's great. Warner had that story about three days ago. Yeah, I wasn't yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. But we were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we were here, Mike. I heard it also, Mike. Well. Did I, do you know who won the Kentucky Derby? I can do that story. <laughs> <laughs> that thief didn't win. No. Oh. And in baseball, another homerless night for Mark McGuire. The Cardinals, another fine outing. They lose to the Phillies 9-4. McGuire now through 32 games, only seven home runs. Oh, that's so great. I can miss, miss, I'm telling you, I get hot. Speculation rampant over his declining power. Rumors like gambling addictions, drinking binges, and a romantic relationship with a teammate. They're all ridiculous and will not even be mentioned by this sportscaster. My take on it, last year was a setup. Major League officials hoping to rekindle fan interest paid off pitchers to serve up gopher balls all season long. Well, that did happen. That's the one yeah, yeah, yeah. and only explanation. That did happen. And it yeah. obviously yep. worked. Yeah, yeah, they wouldn't give the Puerto Rican any good shots there. That's one thing. <laughs> yeah. What's his name, Sosa? <laughs> Jesus, I mean, <laughs> is there any there way, way that you could from. hand me your gun so I have my own gun, but can't but shoot yourself? <laughs> can't you do that? I'm, I'm begging you. Just shoot each other. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing that. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> All right, Bo Dealey, going to have to hang around until after the next hour. In the next hour, Bo is going to hang around with us. Can you hang around? Yeah, for you, baby, I'm okay, here. Where would you be going? <laughs> Excuse the way, me, where am I going? Plunger at where am I going? Butt? I am going to Connecticut. Going over to your office? Or General, over there you got going on? Or Connecticut what? with General Electric. <laughs> I'm going for a meeting with General Electric, one of the greatest companies, if not the greatest company in the world. General Electric stock should soar today. You know what GE great did? Company. Donated all of the appliances to the Imus Ranch. You know how much that's going to amount to? A couple hundred thousand dollars. How great is that? Oh, that's well, what I'm talking yeah. about GE. Plus, I didn't G even ask him to do it, GE by the way. GE brings better things to light, baby. Well, we were going to use GE stuff Ooh. anyway. I did try to get like a deal that. on the stuff. Well, I have to admit. I have to all I can say is that Jack Welch runs some damn good company there. No. He's my man. This is really pathetic. <laughs> You're sucking up to Jack Welch. Well, he comes up the rails with me. He has dinner with me. Now, I, he's I'm a very scratch happy. golfer. Are you aware of that? Yeah, he's a great golfer. He beat no. Greg Norman's. Straight up when he played golf against Greg well, Norman. I could beat Greg Norman if, <laughs> if there were money on it. Just pretend it's Sunday. Can I, yeah, can just I pretend it's Sunday and I could beat yeah. Greg Norman. The police coming straight from the underground. A young nigga got it bad because I'm. The police think they have the authority to kill a minority. That because I ain't the one for a punk motherfucker with a badge and a gun to be beaten on. And thrown in jail, we can go toe to toe in the middle of a cell. I'm a teenager with a little bit of gold and a pager Searching my car, looking for the product I must in the morning The sexiest brothers in Hollywood are crying Enthusiastically as always <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> just the worst dork it has a turquoise buffalo on the top, a turquoise buffalo on the side. It's called Fred Imus Southwest Salsa. It is the best salsa. Isn't that? That's the best salsa on the planet. And then when you open the top, you know, the butt pops up, and it, it gives the buffalo an erection. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fred, Fred. Hey, they Fred. called us dirty. <laughs> Fred, come on, Fred. You sound like a fool. Well, you sound like a gooper. Nobody sucks more than my brother does. Ken Starr has got to... I do something soon. I mean, he either does something soon, writes up a report as to what he has, gets it to Congress, or I, I agree, shut it down. Because no, that's, a point, brilliant, that's a brilliant statement. He's got to do something soon, for Christ's sake. He's had $40 million in four years, and he wants you want him to do something soon? Oh, you know, go back on Carville's payroll, you old weasel. <laughs> you, old pervert. you call my brother a murderer? No pervert. Oh, pervert. Well, that's better. He has the support of, of idiots like my brother. No, I mean, no, it's, it's beyond my ability to comprehend. What? You fat pig. He has a, a <laughs> First of all, I'm not fat. American you're American people, you jerk face nut. <laughs> <laughs> my brother, wrinkle up old, some bald wrinkle up old bald sure. doofus. Fred, we don't need to go back from to Tales from the Crypt, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you make Stephen King look like Alice in Wonderland, okay? You make Jack Palance look like, you know, Mel Gibson. <laughs> well, I, uh, I love you, Fred.